Oh. Yes. Finally. I love bacon. In front of you is all-purpose flour, sugar, farm fresh eggs, and basil margarine. All the basic ingredients you'll need to create a delicious baked dessert. You'll also see a heart-shaped baking tin because baking is all about love. To help you tap into that love, we provided you with a little piece of inspiration. Please turn over your heart-shaped baking tins. Making a layer cake is more difficult than it sounds. There's a lot that can go wrong. If you don't cream your eggs and your butter properly, you're gonna have raw patches of flour. Everything has to be incorporated to have a nice, light, and airy cake. John, can I have one of your bananas? I don't enjoy cake. Favorite desserts as a child was going for banana splits, so I'm, I'm actually gonna make a banana split cake. Gotta get this moisture out of here. The first cake I ever loved was a red velvet cake, but I love blue suede shoes more than I love red velvet cake, so I'm making a blue suede shoe velvet cake. I met my girlfriend wearing blue suede shoes for the first couple months, she'd only call me blue suede shoes. I'm making chocolate cake for my dad. I think it's gonna be the most beautiful cake of the bunch. Now, there's a lot of inspiration here being drawn by family. I'm gonna make banana nut cakes. This is for my sister. She makes the best banana bread in the world, and I never get to make her a birthday cake. I've always been gone playing football, so uh, this is for her. I'm making a mint chocolate birthday cake. It's my husband's favorite. I'm not the uh, strong cake guy, but I'm gonna make a chocolate cake with peanut butter. My son JJ's favorite two ingredients. My birthday is Christmas Day. I usually reach for a generous slice of apple pie with ice cream on top. So I'm uh, basically making this cake as a play on the apple pie, and hopefully they like what I uh, present today. What about Christopher, though? He seemed to be really confident, very confident. Well, Christopher, you know, the pastry man. I'm making my variation on an opera cake. It is a mixture of chocolate and coffee. It's a cake that I started in high school and has slowly been built up over the years by techniques that I've learned. Perfect. David, you're sweating. I sweat. I put this pressure on myself. My son's birthday today. Wow, so there's two of you with, uh, with birthdays today. It's amazing. Excellent, so you're making a peanut butter cake? Peanut butter and chocolate. Standard vanilla icing. Covered the whole thing with pretzels. My favorite part is dipping in the uh, batter. Yeah, it's the best part of the cake, isn't it? That tastes good already. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Time. I'm putting so much pressure on myself. My internal temperature is just roaring. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh my god. I've burnt the peanuts. I have to push forward. I'm not failing on the challenge for JJ. I work. Where's the piping bags? I love a great cake, nice and moist, tasty, but it's the icing I look forward to. The beauty of having icing is that you can actually cover a lot of your mistakes. It's a baker's trick that they don't know never happened. Michael. Hello, Chef Alvin. So you're doing like blue suede, blue velvet. Honestly, it looks like blue carpet. Definitely will not taste like carpet. What are you doing? So I'm going to alternate between uh, cream and blueberry filling so that the blueberry filling isn't too rich. So you're going to do four layers in this thing? I'm going to try. Is that all the cream you're gonna put in? Well, I can put more if you like. You know, when you cut it up, you wanna see the layers. I wanna see nice thick layers because it makes the cake rich and delicious. You got it, Chef. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. You know, David's cake looks absolutely amazing. He handles that spatula like a pro. Well, it's very similar to concrete. It is like troweling. My secret weapon is the fact that I am a talented concrete guy. Hi there, Christopher. Hello, Chef. That's a beautiful technique there. Where did you learn that? Years and years of experience. What else are you going to do now to finish the decoration on this cake? Chocolate curls. And you're tempering the chocolate to get the curls? That's right, because otherwise they won't have big, nice curls. Wow, that's amazing. I'll let you carry on. Thank you, Chef. One minute! Oh, no. They don't have much time, actually, though. I'm going to make this work no matter what. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Ooh. 1. Hands off your cake. Whoa! I'm cooking cakes, baby. I'm cooking cakes. 
This is a blue suede cake with blueberry filling, a little bit of lemon zest, some graham crackers on the side to give a little bit of texture and taste. And I topped it off with some very fine sugar sprinkles. So when I cut through a cake, what I want to see is all the layers all connected. I don't want to see any air pockets in between the icing and the cake. Is that what I'm going to see here? I think so. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Thank you, chef. Well, let's try this. It's a very good cake. It's so moist. I love the blueberry that's running through here. It looks like the kind of cake you would buy in a, in a bake shop. Great job. Just go to the front. The second cake we'd like to see was made with a level of technique and confidence that was nothing short of breathtaking. And that cake belongs to Christopher. Please bring up your cake. This cake really shows off who I was and who I am now. Today, I've done an opera cake, coffee praline buttercream, ganache between the layers, and it's layered all on top of a chocolate sponge. Wow. This is a league of its own. My mouth is watering right now. Thank you, chef. It all oozes out between the layers. It tells me that it is a, such a soft and delicate pastry cream. Beautifully balanced. Big hit of chocolate up front. A touch of that coffee comes in. And then just a slight crunch from the praline that you pureed up. For me, it's best in class. <laughs> Thank you, chef. Chocolate hits you, and then the coffee comes. And after that, textures of the hazelnut. Definitely one of the best cakes I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, chef. I'll be happy for you to do my birthday cake. Please stand down the front. The third cake we like to see was inspired by a loved one. Please come up. David. The chocolate birthday cake, Philadelphia cream cheese peanut butter uh, layers, and then I covered the whole thing with pretzels and the roasted peanuts. It's my little boy's birthday today, so I put everything into it. It's really hard to get a cake that perfect, rigid, smooth construction. You got the peanut butter, you got the cream cheese, all these comfort things that your son loves. This cake is about love. Thank you. Beautifully cooked sponge, enough sweetness, a little saltiness from the peanut and pretzels. In fact, that flavor is, is quite sophisticated and you can't go wrong with peanut butter. Top marks all around for a stunning cake. But when it comes to spelling? Yeah, I'm not known for my spelling. I think that says hap. It made us all very hap. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sean. Chef. What are you making? Today I'm gonna try baking. I'm not a big baker, but we're gonna make a tart with a maple syrup cream filling. I'm from Quebec, so that's uh, why I'm choosing to use the maple syrup. Do you like maple tarts? I absolutely have ma love maple syrup. I've never had a maple tart. No, 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 let me get this. You have never eaten a maple tart, you have never baked, and you're gonna make me a maple tart. It's gonna look good. I don't know if this is gonna be your typical maple tart, chef, but it's gonna taste good. I hope so. Thank you, chef. When I really love something, whether it's for school or it's for cooking, I study hours every week. Put your dish up to the front. It's a tart with a maple pastry cream, a meringue on top, and blueberry coulis. So refresh my memory. You're not a baker, right? Never made a tart in my life. It's pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Just the way the flavors all come together. The tart is crispy. It's well balanced. It's not too sweet. Great job. Thank you so much. Chef Alvin, the man who does not like desserts. Why does everybody think I don't like desserts? <laughs> is it because I'm not a sweet guy? <laughs> wow. Sean? You might have converted me. It's got very nice balance. It's sweet, but I can taste the maple. Beautifully done on pie crust, crispy. The meringue, 
could have been improved. If you get a stiffer meringue, you can probably get a bit more char in it. Overall, you deliver. You deliver. Well done. Thank you. So today I'm making a chocolate mousse Nanamo tart. I never like doing desserts. I never like baking, so I'm definitely stressing. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. Carrot, slow down. The judges told me to slow down, but I just think it's more efficient to sprint there. Like, I'm, I'm wasting time from walking. Close that blast chiller, Eric. Is someone burning something? <laughs> oh my god, somebody's station is smoking. What the hell is burning? That's my station. Oh my god, it's a caramel. I'm definitely screwed. Ugh. Five minutes left. You have five minutes to put together a beautiful dessert for us, or it will be your last five minutes in the Master Chef Canada kitchen. He's actually burnt I something. think it's his caramel again. He's burnt twice. Twice. He's almost in tears. Walk me through it. What is it? The top is supposed to represent, like, the custard of the Nanamaimo bar. It's flavored the same, has the vanilla and icy sugar. The inside's filled with uh, chocolate mousse. So you made caramel not once, not twice, three times. Yeah, chef. Uh, I made a quick caramel at the end just to candy my nuts. Did you have time to taste it? No, Chef. I want you to tell me if you recovered from that mistake. Tastes pretty good. I think you're right. Mistakes aren't always a bad thing. Thank you, Chef. Butter, butter, anybody see butter? I see condensed milk, evaporated milk, all the ingredients to make a tres leches cake. I used to eat this cake with my mom. Chocolate. When she passed away, I started to recreate and cook her recipes. So I'm doing this to honor my mom. I think I'm good. Chef Claude? Jeremy, what are you making? I'm uh, making a tres leches cake wow. with uh, white chocolate and toasted coconut. That brings me back to my childhood. What do you think is the biggest challenge in terms of pulling this one off? The bake time and having it cool in time. Jeremy, if you pull this off, I'm gonna be incredibly impressed. I'm gonna do my best. I hope so. Thank you, Chef. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. At this time, you should be plating. Time's running out, but I'm not going home on this cake. It's toasted coconut and white chocolate tres leche cake. We got three layers. And I put the uh, white chocolate in between each layer. It's absolutely wonderful. It does make me think of South America. I get the wonderful toasted coconut that's around the outer edge, the very light whipped cream. I mean, to think that you were able to pull this off in 60 minutes, it's absolutely astonishing. Well done. Thank you, chef. You know, I have very fond memories of this cake. My grandmother used to make it. The sponge cake you actually made perfectly, but it is a bit dry. Just a few more moments soaking up that condensed milk, and it would have been a masterpiece. It's just begging just for more. Just a little bit more, yeah. Please go back to your station. Thank you, Chef. I'm going to make a version of the chocolate cake I made for my wedding. And I'm going to do it with my mom's famous frosting. Recently, my mom has been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. To see the woman that you've learned from and admired slowly fade away, it's tough. All the more reason I have to win this. I gotta bring it home for my mama. All right. Miranda, please bring your dish to the front. I just got called up second. I'm so excited. I did a little bow. 
I made an orange and chocolate mini cake with toasted orange scented coconut topped with dark chocolate buttercream. And the inspiration for this cake came from where? So I made a version of this chocolate cake for my wedding. Let's have a little taste. That icing is sublime. Oh. It is absolutely delicious. Soft, creamy, subtle hints of that bitter orange. Great balance. Chocolate cake with the coconut, delicious. A little on the dry side, okay. but the two together are heaven. Thank you, Chef. Your husband is a very lucky fellow. I think so. Miranda. Hi, Chef Alvin. Tell me, what is the best part of this cake? Uh, the icing. You know what's the best way to eat icing? And just take this. <laughs> Okay. Wow, I almost bit off my finger. <laughs> that is one of the nicest, smoothest, chocolatiest, loving icing I've ever had. You will go far. Thank you, Chef. I am Master Chef Woman Miranda. Hear me roar. This is a tough challenge. 24 cupcakes, three different flavors. They gotta have pizzazz. Given the time limit here, they really need to get the batter going. Just gotta focus. I'm making a candied bacon chocolate cupcake, a peach spiced cupcake, and a banana foster cupcake. I'm gonna do a s'more cupcake, a chocolate mocha cupcake as well, and I'm gonna be doing a lemon coconut. As an insurance broker, you kind of need to be a stickler, and baking is kind of the same. You need to have exact measurements, and you can't make mistakes. The stakes are super high, I don't wanna go home. I'm not gonna have time to fuss around with four different batters and add flavors into each batter. If I just stick with one base, stick with chocolate, my girls love chocolate. We're not looking for a bake sale cupcake. We're looking for a cupcake that is sophisticated, creative, you can actually give them that opportunity to really stand out. I see red wine. Why not put red wine in a red velvet cupcake? What you doing, what you doing? Red wine and cupcakes might be really weird. I'm hoping that won't hurt me. The wine? Yeah. I have trouble with the concept of it, but it's it's very innovative. It's risky. Oh. Five minutes! Better start decorating! Vince could be the first one out of the gate with his decorating. Colors are fun. The piping requires a fine hand, a little finesse, in order for it to look absolutely beautiful. And then you can just put the finishing jewels to it to make it really stand out and look special. Damn, the shaky hands. My hands, they're so sweaty, I can't grip the piping bag properly. This is ridiculous. I'm very worried about Jacqueline. Ah. 30 seconds left, come on, come let's on, get guys. You can do it. Oh my god. I'm gonna drizzle a little chocolate on these. Look at the meringue on Mary's cupcake. It's absolutely beautiful. <sighs> Keep going to the buzzer, right to the end. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and off! Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Good job. I'm getting a little emotional because my cupcakes didn't quite hit that spot where I wanted them. Well done. This was not an easy challenge. And now it's time to see how you did. Jacqueline, please bring up your cupcake tower. This cupcake tower is what separates me from winning and being an accountant. I don't want to go home. The purple ones are a lavender-infused cupcake with vanilla Swiss buttercream. The yellow is a lemon cupcake with a lemon buttercream. And the red wine velvet cupcake with a cream cheese icing, toasted walnuts, and crumble on the top. Red wine is something I've never seen in a cupcake, so this is the first for me. This is absolutely delicious. I love the innovation. Do you know the history of red velvet cake? The original one was made with red beets. And the red wine, it's a perfect replacement because I get that spiciness, earthiness. Now, there are little flaws. These little tiny crumbs, I don't think it really needs it. It makes it look dirty. Overall, 
I love it. The lavender. My least favorite herb is lavender. So this has to be pretty sensational. I'm just hoping it's not too perfumey when you eat it. This is a very sophisticated cupcake. Really well balanced. What does this mean to you? It means that I actually have a chance to make my dreams come true. I think you have a lot of doubt. I saw it happening when you were cooking. I think sometimes when something this great happens that it can't really actually be happening because I've never really had things easy. Unless you start believing you're not gonna get very far. I mean, accountants don't usually make beautiful tower of cupcakes like this. Please go back to your station. I didn't realize that at first, but I do think that this competition for me is more than just cooking. I just can't picture myself sitting in an office. I want to be here. Mary, please bring up your cupcakes. It's really important for me to do well. I don't want to let the judges down. Walk me through it. A s'more cupcake with a chocolate sponge flavored with a bit of vanilla and a Swiss meringue on top. Over here, mocha and a Swiss buttercream. And then a coconut cupcake with a little bit of lime zest. That's the one I'm going to try. Look at that. It is absolutely delicious. Beautiful, big, crispy coconut flakes. The lemon gives it a little bit of freshness. I think the appearance is monochromatic. They need a little bit of color. I love marshmallow, so that's the one I'm gonna try. Earthy, dark chocolate. Perfect. Thank you so much. That pork chop is calling my name, but I cook meat twice. So I got to show them that I can do something besides meat. So I'm going to make cream cheese tarts. It's out of my comfort zone. Eileen. Sir. What's the hardest part in this challenge for you? Uh, in the mystery box, there is ingredients that I'm not comfortable with. Like what? The kale. I've never cooked with kale. I'm sure in the army that you ate tons of kale. There wasn't any of this in the military. What are you making? I am making maple fudge pie with uh, cream cheese, whipped cream, and a berry coulis. Good luck. Thank you very much. Perfect. I'm liking it. John, how are you? Oh, good. What's happening here? What I'm making is three different Philly cream cheese tarts. What's the toughest part of this dish for you? Um, just kind of making it look pretty. You think it's a smart idea? I gotta really go for it, show you guys what I can do. Good luck. Fire it up. Lynn. Yes! I'm all excited because I'm one of the top three. The other cooks need to look out for me because I can cook. The dish is a maple fudge pie with whipped cream cheese and wild berry coulis. The flavor of the maple is wonderful. The smooth, rich, velvety textures, perfect. Pastry dough, I think, is a nice thickness, even. The tastes, spot on. Lynn, you mentioned that you get doubted a lot and you have to work harder than everyone else. Yes, chef. That's why I decided to make my own pie crust, chef. Well, the crust could use five more minutes, but the topping is so delicious, it almost doesn't matter. It's a very good dish. Thank, Thank you. you, chef. The next dish we'd like to taste intrigues us with its tempting flavor combinations. I want to be up the top three. If I get called, it will be a triumph. The dish displayed both skill and technique. That dish was made by John, please oh, bring yeah. your dish up. Amazing. These tarts have a chance of winning the first mystery box. Well, what I got here is fabulous Philadelphia cream cheese tarts. One is a cherry and vanilla. In the middle, we have a nice lemon. 
and a walnut maple blackberry. We're very surprised. <laughs> we would never think that you can come up with something so delicate and pretty. I like the sound of that crispy cracking of that phyllo. Thank you, Chef. You know, John, they're beautiful. I like it for two reasons. First, everything comes together, and that's very important. Secondly, you know, I'm not a sweet guy, but the sweetness is perfect. Beautiful dish. Thank you. Beautiful. Three great flavors, each one rich, full, bright, and you've proven you can cook a great dessert. Wow, thank you. What are you making here, Eric? Oh, I'm making a fruit tart, and I'm gonna fill it with bananas and top it with some brulee strawberries. Are you using crunchy or smooth peanut butter? I'm using crunchy for the filling, and then I mix some smooth with the chocolate. Why did you decide to go sweet instead of savory? I thought it was more outside the box. Figured everybody would do pork tenderloin. A little bit risky? Yeah, I'm all about taking risks. The second person who made it into our top three chose to do a sweet dish. This was definitely the best looking we saw today. And the person who made this dessert is Eric. My strategy is showing the judges my potential, my versatility, and my ambition. It's a banana peanut butter tart topped with strawberries and a chocolate peanut butter sauce. The taste blends very nicely together. It's just a touch dry. I would serve this with some ice cream or a sauce. Very nice. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. It's very well balanced. Nice, lightly golden brown crust and even thickness all the way around. The peanut butter, the chocolate, the strawberries cut the richness. Sometimes it's just hard to find something wrong with such a great dish. Thank you so much. Good job. I don't think the other home cooks know I can cook. Now the cat's out of the bag. They know I'm a top contender. So I'm a threat to be reckoned with. <laughs> oh. Yes. Finally. I love bacon. In front of you is all-purpose flour, sugar, farm fresh eggs, and basil margarine. All the basic ingredients you'll need to create a delicious baked dessert. You'll also see a heart-shaped baking tin because baking is all about love. To help you tap into that love, we provided you with a little piece of inspiration. Please turn over your heart-shaped baking tins. Oh. oh my goodness, this is my sister. She's back in Nigeria. I love my sister so much. I see the loves of my life. I am in this competition for my papa. My two brothers, they're my life. Seeing grandma's face, I'm just elated. She's such a beautiful woman, and she's inspired me so much. <laughs> I don't know where the judges found this picture of my dad. He's my biggest supporter, and I'm gonna show him that I can do this. My dad loves green tea, and my mom loves chestnut cream. So I'm gonna mix the two together and make a matcha roll cake. It's decorated at the batter level, and I don't think the judges have ever seen anything like it. What I'm about to do is practically impossible in an hour. I'm not sure I can do it, but that's what my dad taught me to do. Shoot for the stars, try your hardest, and that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm not gonna play it safe. The judges have accused me of not cooking from the heart on numerous occasions, and I'm gonna prove them wrong. I'm finally baking. Terry, 
Hi, Chef. Look at that smile. I know. I love bacon, and it's great to have a bacon challenge. So tell me, how much inspiration are you getting right now from your sister? Oh, I'm getting a lot of inspiration from my sister. She's also an amazing baker, and we bake a lot. And we baked this cheesecake together before. Cheesecake? So, yeah, I'm making cheesecake three ways. Three cheesecakes? I am doing three cheesecakes. In 60 minutes? In 60 minutes, because I believe I have something to prove. All right, I'm excited. Thank you, Chef. The last 10 minutes, it's all about the finishing touches. It's the filling, it's the stuffing, it's the layering of the icing. Mary right now has that laser beam focused. I need to show the judges that I'm the best baker here. <laughs> I want the judges to see that even though I'm not much of a baker, that I can still hold my own. I'm gonna go with as many layers as I can. I want this cake to be really high. I don't want it to fall over. Ha <laughs> ha it's cold! <laughs> I got it! <laughs> One of the most difficult Japanese desserts that I executed it in an hour! April, are you, you doing good? Oh, wow, that looks amazing. It's no Japanese roll cake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, freak. Look at that. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Super proud. I know my family would be super proud. I'm just hoping all the flavors are there. It's a Japanese matcha roll cake with the chestnut cream in the center. It is impressive. Thank you, Chef. I don't even know how to do these patterns myself, I'll be honest. I don't know how you pulled that off. It's extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. There's a perfect balance between the chestnut cream and the green tea, and that white chocolate crunch. Outstanding. Thank you, Chef. Extremely light, and the sponge is incredibly moist. Did you do anything to the sponge to make it so moist? No, I just have a good recipe, and the base cell helped out. Extraordinary presentation, technique. I can't find anything to fault on this. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. My dad would be ecstatic to see me now. He would be so proud. The second home cook whose dish we'd like to taste tapped into their passion for baking and plated a beautiful dessert. Terry, please bring up your dish. I am thinking about my sister as I walk up with my dish, because I know she's going to be very proud of this moment. So I've got three different types of cheesecakes on the dish. I've got a raspberry cheesecake, a lemon cheesecake, and a milk chocolate cheesecake. The presentation to me is absolutely beautiful. Between the simple piping, the tuxedo-dressed dipped <laughs> strawberries, the feather work on top of the chocolate, a lot of different technique. Yes, Chef. I put all I had into this cheesecake. It all comes down to taste, though, Terry. Yes, Chef, it does. Terry, it has got that rich, creamy, but ever so ultra smooth filling. That crisp lemon just cleans it up nicely as you chew through it. And then you've got that wonderful crisp base to it. Thank you, Chef. Your sister would be very proud. That's nice. Thank you, Chef. It's light. The crust is perfect, nice and crunchy. You got the nice ratio of crust and cream cheese. And of course, it looks good. Well done. Thank you, Chef. I feel on top of the world. The third home cook we're calling up didn't let their lack of baking experience hold them back for one second. And that home cook was... Sean. Please bring your dish up. I'm super happy. My dad would love this cake. This one's for you, Dad. It's a layered key lime cake covered with a Swiss meringue and torched, and then just a little lime zest. That's a pretty impressive looking dessert. Thank you very much, Chef. The kind of thing as a little kid you'd want to stick your finger in and just take a big lick, right? Now let's see what it happens when we cut this open. Mission accomplished. You've got that meringue that is very soft, that sponge cake, wonderful moist, but has a little flavor from the lime, which cleans it up really nicely. It's got it all going on. Thank you.
boom. It's awesome. That lime zest just jumps out. Cake is beyond moist. Take a look at that. What you achieved. Definitely proud. I hope my parents are too. I couldn't be happier with myself. I wish I could save a piece of this cake for my dad.